Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and capitalism is a perfect system because literal wolves, I guess. Yes, that's right, we're gonna talk about wolves and capitalism, the thing that you didn't know you needed to hear about. Now this might sound off, but I'm really uninterested in politics. I'm actually super irritated by politics. I don't wanna talk about politics. YouTube wants to push me down a political hole. Like they give YouTubers this thing on the back end, uh, it's a research tab, and it kind of gives you some idea as to what the algorithm wants from you. And it wants political shit from me, and the very last thing I want to talk about is fucking like Joe Biden or some shit. I am super interested in political economy, and both people and algorithms seem to think that's the same thing, uh, but it's not. This is why you see me talking about things like pretentiousness or YouTubers quitting. Like, I've been talking about Pal World and AI and George Carlin and shit. Like, none of that shit would fly on TYT or whatever the fuck Kyle Kalinske and his goofy wife do. This video about $100 sweatpants where there's an extra large zipper for jacking off. I'm not going to make any criticisms about showing what you got. I've done it before if you've ever watched my free speech documentary. Um, I didn't make you look up my butthole, though. I will say that. That's, like, peak the type of thing I care about. How can I combine my two primary interests, very stupid things, and political economy? And as you might expect, this leads me into a lot of strange arguments, either as a participant or even as an observer. To make a good argument about a point, one needs to have reason, logic, uh, grounding it in material conditions that make it make sense. That, folks, is not the kind of argument we're talking about today. So some CEO and some guy called Policy Wonk were arguing on Twitter. Now, I just want to preface that Policy Wonk has the two most annoying words in the world in his username, policy and wonk. And, and, and other than the fact that he's right about this very specific thing, I don't want to be associated with him in any way, shape, or form, because I have a feeling he's a big dumb lip. I don't know, but I got a feeling based on that name. Jeremy Kaufman, on the other hand, though, woohoo. So Jeremy and Policy Wonk are arguing about property. Policy Wonk says, you can't have a coherent claim to property in the absence of a state. Not triggered enough for you? Now, once an argument is even partially about who is and isn't triggered, uh, it's a stupid argument. But uh, uh, in terms of the state and property, at least Policy Wonk is right. Uh, Jeremy Kaufman, however, he really had a good response. Uh, he says, socialists, you can't have property without a state. Literal wolves. And he includes then an image that comes from the Voyager's Wolf Project, GPS tracking multiple wolves in six different packs. This is not a good argument. Now, in Jeremy's mind, wolves are a coherent counter-argument to the statement, you can't have a coherent claim to property in the absence of a state, which is, um, childish and stupid. Hey, you know the fun thing about wolves? First off, there's two of them inside of me. And second off... <laughs> Sorry. The second really important thing about wolves is that they are not human beings. Uh, meaning, they don't think like human beings. They don't e exist like human beings. They don't, they don't do anything like human beings. Are there some human beings who roam the countryside hunt, prey, fuck, and howl? Sure. But does that describe what we would call the aggregate of human experience? Certainly not. But it's not just about how different a wolf is from a human being, which honestly feels like ridiculous and stupid to say, well, Jeremy, wolves are different than people. <laughs> but downstream of the fact that wolves and people are different things, um, wolf comprehension pales in comparison to human comprehension. Relative to other wolves, yeah, I'm sure that there are some smart wolves out there, but compared to people, every single wolf is dumber than the dumbest person you've ever met in your life. Seriously, attempt to teach wolves math, which is, by the way, necessary for them to understand property. If Jeremy is talking about property specifically to argue against socialism, then let's talk about how a Marxist sees property. Property is a relation. In capitalism, the object we're referring to as property has a relation with a person, and that is ownership. It is that relation specifically which the socialist has a problem with. 
However, not in the way that somebody like Jeremy would likely argue, which is that we want to take away your toothbrush and your PlayStation. Marx specifically makes distinctions about personal property and productive property, but I don't really give a shit about that because we're literally talking about wolves. We are talking about what wolves can comprehend, and we are so far beyond that at this point, it's ridiculous. So let's dumb it down a little bit. Let's not talk about the Marxist understanding of property. Let's talk about the liberal one. Property as a right. Do wolves know what rights are? Absolutely not, because wolves do not conceptualize anything in the way that a person does. Not one goddamn thing. Wolves don't even know what a concept is. How would they know what many individual concepts are if they don't even categorically know what they're referring to? A wolf, again, eats, fucks, and howls a lot. The reason you can't have a coherent claim to property in the absence of a state is because the way that we handle property is not like a wolf. Humans have society. Somebody might argue, oh, wolves have community and society. It's not the same thing. Again, wolves do not have language. They don't have words. Wolves don't think like, oh, well, my relationship to that thing is different than my relationship to that thing. Wolves just do stuff. They're not mindless, but they don't conceptualize things as humans do. The way that this guy is inferring that wolves imply property exists in nature is essentially saying that because wolves like to sleep in the same spot that they know that they were safe in before, because wolves fight when unknown wolves come around, that property is invoked somehow, that argument is childish and stupid. The relation of property exists because there is an infrastructure to enforce and regulate it. And that goes back to before capitalism. Humans didn't have property until there was a means to enforce property. And again, property is a human classification for something. It doesn't really matter what property is, whether you agree with me, a Marxist, that property is a relation, or you agree with Adam Smith and, and, and you think that property is a right. Uh, relations and rights are both human things that do not exist in the animal kingdom. Those things are fundamentally of the human psyche. They're something we came up with along the line to describe processes that we evolved. Phenomena we're attempting to explain. Wolves do not do that. That is so silly. And I'm happy that this kind of a stupid argument came up because I've been talking a lot about intellectual property. This is the fundamental relation that is underneath all of that criticism of intellectual property. You can go into it uh, or you can check out my upcoming documentary, which I'm going to drop a lot more information about very soon, um, called Plato is a Bitch, AI and Bomber Guy. Seriously, stay tuned. But it's important to understand that property is a fundamentally human relation and to understand that it's not necessarily specifically about like just occupying a, a, an area. Regardless of what you think it is, uh, relation or right, uh, it is not something that literal wolves provide an argument for in context of capitalism. That's goddamn ridiculous. If this guy's like a CEO, he is at very least at some point run a company. I don't know what the hell he's doing at the moment, other than arguing about property with the proles on Twitter, which is, by the way, a very weird thing to do when you're a member of the owning class like that. I don't, it's just important to start understanding these conceptions. You see, this whole thing sets at the center of the biggest problem, the problem of overproduction. Uh, property generally is referring to productive property, the means of production, and ownership of which is what creates class. The subordinate class, the workers, consumers, etc., and the owning class, the capitalists. As technology gets better, you need less labor to make products, and that's what gives products their value. So technology enables you to make more of something with less labor, which devalues it, uh, and also distributes less money out to the subordinate class. There is a gulf that's created. The purchasing power of the subordinate class continues to go down, which makes it so that they can buy less things. But at the same time, they have to make more things to maintain the same profit. You see the contradiction that's created here? That's the problem of overproduction. It's not, the capitalists make too much stuff. It's a mathematical flaw that makes capitalism always headed for crisis. And property relations are a large part of that. And wolves are not a good argument for 
any of the things that I just said. So I think that's it. I think that's all I've got for you today. Like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe become a patron too. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, have a great day.